Hello everyone, my name is Yuan Villalon, I'm an audiologist and I'm studying for master's degree in health, specializing in technological innovation. I'd like to present my research project on pitch contour perception in speech and music at excited speed in hearing impaired seniors. This study was carried out with Yohanna Levesque and Etienne Godrin from the Lions Neuroscience Research Center. Pitch contours are what you use when you speak with intonations give emotions in speech, or when you hear the melodic aspect of music. It can change the meaning of words or phrases uh, in tonal or non-tonal languages. The literature on static pitch differences doesn't show large differences between normal and hearing impaired listeners, but there seems to be some edge effects. In contrast, in dynamic pitch contours variations, hearing loss seems to have a stronger influence on the ability to detect pitch contours in speech and music. Hearing impaired listeners need pitch contour elevations 1.5 to 6 times larger than for normal hearing listeners to detect a change. Using hearing aids does not appear to play any role in the results. As far as music is concerned, hearing impaired listeners have poorer pitch perception and show reduced frequency discrimination. We are interested in the most typical hearing impaired population, older adults with mild to moderate hearing loss. In addition to the age effect on static pitch perception, there is also a slowing down that has an effect on speech understanding that makes older adults particularly vulnerable uh, to speeding up stimuli. So we are wondering to what extent does speed play a role in the discrimination of pitch contours in speech and in music and in combination with hearing impairment. To address the effect of hearing loss, we test 14 hearing impaired participants fit with hearing heads and 15 normal hearing participants. We tried edge matching the two groups as much as possible and end up with groups aged 67 and 62 respectively. We used five broad sentences from the French matrix test. The test consists in discriminating between a reference stimulus and a second stimulus that either presents a pitch rise on one of the rods or not. Our stimuli were filtered at 3 kHz to make sure the two groups had similar access to frequency information. Here's an example. Jean-Luc Ramas, d'où le ton rose. Jean-Luc Ramas, d'où le ton rose. In the same discrimination test, we also used sentences that were applied 25% faster. Jean-Luc Ramas, d'où le ton rose. The aim is to check whatever acceleration degrade performance similarly for the two groups. We had two sizes of pitch elevation, 2.5 and 3.5 semitons, and two speeds, normal and accelerated. All the conditions were mixed with 10 repetitions per condition and we calculated the primes for each condition. Because the way we process pitch contours may be very different in music than in speech, we also performed the same experiment with pairs of melody. They were synthesized using a singing voice to still keep it somewhat connected to speech. The melody were created by a composer, Simon Deboeuf, specially for our study. And here as well, we had a condition where the melodies were 25% faster. That the result will be degraded with acceleration. This degradation will be more pronounced for hearing impaired listeners. First, let's talk about our results in the speech task. This is the D' prime as a function of pitch elevation. We observed a significant effect of pitch elevation in both populations. Thus, the lower the rise, the more difficult it is to detect in both groups. But there is no overall effect of hearing loss. We can also observe an effect of acceleration for each elevation. Results are degraded with acceleration in both populations. This means that acceleration has a negative effect on results. On the other end, we found no significant interaction between hearing loss and acceleration thus rejecting our hypothesis. At both normal and accelerated speeds, our two populations had similar results. 
In the case of music, we found no significant effect of either group or accelerations. Thus, the results of music and speech did not allow us to make the same observations. In addition, we carried out complementary statistics using the answer to the sociodemographic questionnaire we gave and our measured results. We correlated hearing loss, age, music listening, speech comprehension, a level of education to the effect of acceleration. Uh, that's the difference between the D prime at normal speed and the D prime at accelerated speed in speech for the two elevation and in music. The only significant correlation was with age for a speech elevation of 3.5 summitons. Younger participants had a stronger deleterious effect of acceleration than older participants. This goes against our expectations. Indeed, we assumed that acceleration would be more deleterious in older people. Let's move on the discussion. We did not observe similar results between speech and music despite the fact that we use a voice in both. A difference is that the composer had the freedom of note variations placement in order to maintain the harmonic coherence. Similarly, the different elevations in this experiment were not parametrically controlled like in the speech task for the same reasons. Compared with speech, we can also talk about the fact that the working memory load with this experiment may be more important. Indeed, whereas speech has only five different units to remember, two of which are predefined as potentially modifiable, the music stimuli were longer in duration and were composed of 7 to 14 units. This additional factor of memory together with the surprise effect of variations in the length of melody pairs may put music stimuli at a disadvantage compared to speech stimuli. It's nevertheless noteworthy that our average correct response scores are equivalent between speech and music. What's more, we observed no significant effect of hearing loss. Yet, in the literature, for example, grant studies spoke of a difference of 1.5 to 6 times greater for the hearing impaired group. How to explain this discrepancy? We may hypothesize that we try to make things too hard for the normal hearing population by, for example, adding the 3 kHz filter. In a subsequent study, we would like to measure the effect of filtering alone. The strength of our study is a very small age difference between groups. It would be no interesting to characterize the effect of age with certainty. Thanks for listening.